in case anybody doesn't know, I'm TJ Kenyon, uh, the program manager at Learning Fuse. And most of my role is, you know, of course, helping people get ready for the program and then helping find jobs afterwards. I'm kind of an oddball in that I love the job search process. <laughs> yeah, you are. Networking, you know, career services, stuff gets me excited. So we've got Dennis Dang with us. What, uh, when did you come through the, through the program? Or do you want to tell, tell us a little bit about yourself? Yes. So as you mentioned, my name is Dennis Dang. I am a UI engineer now at Kelly Blue Book. I started back in, what was, when was it? May of 2017. <laughs> That was like almost two years ago now. Yeah. Yeah. Time and flies. I'm, I'm on my second job now. Um, but before that, I started coding for maybe six months prior. I wrote um, my first Boolean. I, I didn't even know what a Boolean was in 2016. And maybe in January 2017, I'm like, oh, it's just a true false value. Yeah. And that's my beginning there. It's I'm funny like, how it, 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 I think in, you, know, you hit a nail on the head here early on, which is uh, how – I, I think how much of a misconception there is between behind coding and what people think that they have to be smart enough or know about it. Like oh, you definitely. said, you're, you're talking about this term Boolean. And then, you know, you've got, uh, and you know, what in reality, it's like you said, it's a true false value. Yeah. You know, it's something that we encounter on a daily basis, but nobody walks around and is like, oh, that was a Boolean, you know, right there. Yeah. You're so, a Boolean. Yeah, yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> Watch your language, Dennis. No. Um, so you started, uh, you, how did you stumble into coding? How did you, what were you doing before? I, um, let's see. I was working, I was in a bio major. I was working in a lab, just pipetting viruses from between cells. You're whatnot. saving the world. I was saving the world. I was testing viruses that would fix dengue fever. Oh my gosh, yeah. okay. Um, I'm not sure where that's going now, but eventually it was just stressful, right? Just working all day. And you know, you, for myself, it's practical. Um, software engineering is a hot market. You, it pays you really well for the amount of effort you put in, right? And so it's just a, it was just a clear thing. And but I also love it. So yeah, that's the best. That part. probably helps. It probably helps a lot, guys. <laughs> um, I love this thing. I do this every single day at home, even off, in your free time. Even my free time. Really? Of course, I make sure I dance and do everything else to keep myself well rounded. Yeah, I love this thing. Yeah. That's that. I, and I, and I think that's you know something that we hear time and time again is it. It's a little bit addicting, you know, mm. it, creating, building, solving problems that you know at first glance don't have a uh, a set you know solution. And, yes. and coming up with and creating them. Yes. Um, so here we are. We, we we've got you know you're you're um, you're saving the world. You're curing dengue, and you say you know what? No more. Um, no more. I gotta I gotta I gotta save the world a different way. I need money. Yeah, That's yeah. yeah. You need okay. I needed, I needed to survive. Yeah. You needed a career. School loans. Yeah. Career. Yeah. Yeah. No. I mean, it definitely makes sense. And so, in finding something that I guess kind of matched with, you know, putting you in that position to have a career. You know, support yourself, maybe a future family, stuff like that. Right. But then also something that you enjoyed. And you stumbled into coding, uh, discovered that for about six months, you said. Yeah. You were you were on your own? I was on my own for six months doing free code camp. But I really okay. I, my brother met, mentioned, hey, you should go to a coding bootcamp. I'm like, I, I could do this. I could teach myself. Yeah. Or, but then realistically thinking, it might take me a year or two years. And I, I can't, I don't want to, I can't stay in my current job more longer than that. Mm. And so I explored my options in Orange County and, um, Basically, Orange County. There were a couple schools, and yeah. Learning Fuse was the closest. The pricing, we could talk about later on. Yeah. Was it worth it? I would say it was so worth it, guys. The ROI is just, return on interest is just phenomenal. Yeah. yeah. It's, I, think it's, I think it's one of those things, it's, it's really easy to look at the price tag and get a little bit nervous and worried at first. Seriously. But then, of course, you got to look long term. Yeah. You know, what, what position am I going to be putting myself in? And then, you know, my future, you know, family and all of that kind of stuff to support them. I mean, we're talking coming out of a coding program and you're, you know, I think the average web developer uh, in Orange County is making about $65,000. Right. Um, and that's, you know, that's kind of being safe with that estimate right there. Very safe, by um, the way. Now, the one thing we really don't want to dive too much into is, oh, you should be doing this for the money. But that, you know, it's, it's, it's a... It's it's non question. It's not a question about if it's you know uh, needed, and then of course if it um, is a you know a career that's going to support you. But um, back to you know what you did. So you came came to Learning Fuse. How did you decide on Learning Fuse? Learning Fuse was, it was actually it was just kind of fun. I I asked if I could just come to the office and just hang out. I was like, hey, can I sit on some lectures? And they were very Dan was very open about it. And I just came in and I just sat there for an hour or two just studying too but just being in a sofa and just listening on mm. and i did that about maybe a couple times and i was like all right the atmosphere is what i want these people are driven people as in the students and the, and the teacher 
and it was just the right combination. Yeah. When you were looking at programs, um, did you did you have any concerns or fears before going to a boot camp? Were you, I mean, or were you just like this is this is gonna be a cakewalk? You know what? I prepped so much prior. Um, so so I heard of Learning Fuse and UCI boot, uh, coding boot camp two months prior. Right, that's this my local area, mm. and differing pricing. I, they were about four thousand dollars difference, but I just felt two thousand nine ninety five actually. Oh, thank you. Um, it was it was a big difference, of course, but I. You know, I had no fear. I was just ready. I wanted to make something different. And I definitely have that privilege. I know that. You know, I took out a loan for all this. And I was just ready. Coming in, I knew something. That mm. was it. So, uh, so you know, you, you put a little thought into it. Um, were you able to sit in on classes at UCI? Um, I didn't even know reach out. The guy kept reaching out, and it was just so money-focused. that. Ooh. Yeah, that's why I was like... Nah, I was already attached to Learning Fuse for a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So human face cool. There. So you're here now, and okay. you know you're you're in Learning Fuse. Um, you know you go through the program. You're you know you've got the technical skills. Um, something you know, little side note. I would say you know Dennis, you came in every day with the attitude that we look for. You know you were excited about what we were doing. You were passionate about it. It makes it easy. You know yeah. it makes it easy when you know you're. You're asked to spend, you know, 10, 12 hours a day behind a computer and you're trying to accelerate this like deep dive into a completely new world. But, you know, once again, when you love it, when you enjoy it and, you know, you're coming in and you're like, what else am I going to do today? Yes. It makes it a lot more fun. Yeah. I was able to do, go into like hyper focus mode in that three months. It was a great skill to have and I still have that now. Yeah. Are you familiar with flow? I've heard of that yeah, term. Yes. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if we have too many times when we were able to do that, you know, during the program because there's a lot going on. But yeah, there's the, of course, the hyper efficiency that you people are able to hit at a certain level of uh, focusness. Yeah. So, um, yeah, something like the productivity apparently goes between uh, four or five hundred percent increase. So, Whoa. yeah, I know. I still haven't found it yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's a lot going on, um, but. So coming through the program, um, you've, you know, you're, you're, you're learning the technical skills. Um, of course, your goal, I'm assuming at the end was to land a full time job um, and going through the job search process. Can you kind of walk us through, you know, what you found beneficial? What were some of the things that, you know, really helped you, I guess, set yourself apart from, you know, the, the boot camp graduates that not only are coming out of Learning Fuse, but also all of the other programs? Yeah. I could, I could share two key points that I've learned. One was people focus a lot on the heavy technical side, but by week 10, so we're just a 12-week program here. Mm -hmm. So by week 10, I was already training my soft skills. I was going through general technical questions, or not technical questions, like behavioral questions, right? Mm -hmm. Like what are you good at? What are you bad at? How do you resolve problems? And I was ready. So when I was interviewing, there was no fear. The only fear was perhaps if they asked me a technical question, and but I trusted myself. I studied. So that's one thing, right? Know your, you're just interviewing for a regular job. Mm -hmm. And people forget that, right? They think it's just, oh, you got to know JavaScript. Yep. You got to know something, but it's never like that. Yeah. Especially if you're a junior entry level. Um, managers are just looking for someone that um, can prove themselves and can just do the job and make their business money. Mm -hmm. Right. So my second point, too, was I was recently, my old manager, my previous manager, asked me to help interview with some people at his company. And... I, and it's just, it's just unfortunate or fortunate that I knew both the students too. And what, from behind the scenes, the manager was telling me that um, to set yourself apart, it's just hard to review these students because no one does anything extra, right? It, they, she was really, he or she was really nervous. And it just goes back to show, it goes back to show that you need to just claim your energy and just interviewing as if you're the boss of this interview and, People feel weird talking about themselves. Yes. But what they forget is that the next candidate is going to be talking about themselves. If at the same level, if not more, you know, um, more selling themselves, if you yeah. will. Uh, and you have to sell yourself. Exactly. And, that's, and, and I think that's something that is really, it, it's tough for people to do. It's tough for people to feel comfortable doing. But the manager, the person on the other side of the table knows that you're kind of doing that. Right. You know, it's it, they're not going to hold it back. You know, when you're saying, "Oh, I was able to do this and I did this," and of course, you don't want to be I, I, I the entire time. You can't BS it exactly. Um, and you want to make sure that you know they can tell that you're a team player and you know you're, you've worked with other people. Definitely. But you know, at the end of the day, if you aren't 
going into these interviews and you're talking about your skill set from not only here's, you know, for example, here's what an Axios call is, but here's what an Axios call is and here's where I've done it. Here's why I used it. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it, it. I think you, you, know, you made a great point of the, the technical skills. Yes, they're, they're going to get you, you know, maybe to the interview. They're going to look at your GitHub. They're going to see, you know, what your commit history is and stuff like that and how clean your code is. But that has to be backed up by the way that you're able to speak about it. And what's tough is a lot of boot camps. And because it is so short, you really don't have a ton of time to say, hey, learn how to do it. And then also, by the way, get really good at talking about it, too. Yes. Learn the lingo. Yes. You know, learn the language, learn the skill set, learn the lingo, get ready for the interview process. And you're going to do that all in a 12 week period. So you are practicing your not only obviously the soft skills, which are super important, super important. Um, because I, I think another thing that people overlook is that you're going to have to be trained no matter what company you join. I mean, you said you're on your second position right now with Kelly Blue Book. When you hit, let's just, let's just, I think I know what you were going to, I'm going to throw a softball out here uh, question, but you know, when you joined Kelly Blue Book, did you hit the ground running on day one or was there a little bit of a training learning curve? I actually did hit the, the ground running. You did? Running. I what? did. They were surprised that I was able to keep up and I was I achieved everything in the first sprint. So you, you knew their entire environment right away? Setting up took me about three days, and they're like, "Wow, Boom. Dennis, you got okay. to set up setting up." So there days. was still a little bit of a learning. All right, fine, I take it back. <laughs> okay, Dennis, we've 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 covered the fact that you're a rock star. Be humble. Uh, be humble. Be, <laughs> um, so there's a little bit of a learning curve going in there. Obviously, they have to you know like you and Definitely. you know and and you know who, your personality and stuff. What were some of the the questions that were asked in your your initial interview with Experian? Well, Experian or Kelly Blue? Experian. Experian. Let's they let's hear because this is this is the first technical interview and position you landed mm -hmm. correct right so what was that like you know was it all technical questions was it soft skill technical walk us through it let's go without so, giving away too many of joe's questions and secrets yes definitely i won't do that um they just went from my resume from top to bottom um i set up my resume in such a way where i list out all my technical skills front end back end whatnot and they just asked like how did you know this how'd you do this and how'd you implement this why this or that for example um how did you use Mongo, I, we normally know that to be as an enterprise level solution, but nowadays there's so many database as a service and I just talk through it. Every question that they asked me, I would respond with that and a little bit more. Um, going on to that, so they asked me, they were just going off my resume from top to bottom and eventually they asked me about JavaScript, but it was simple, right? I, I guess I got lucky, mm -hmm. um, but they really I could tell that they were You got lucky or you were prepared? I was prepared. Yeah. Fortunately, you know, you. You Luck were ready for is it. is opportunity meets preparation. There you go. Yeah. Right. So I was prepared. Um, I was, they noticed, too, I was like, are you, they asked me if I was nervous. And I was like, how do you know? And they're like, you're <laughs> drinking a lot of water. <laughs> and I was like, you're right. And I noticed my hand shaking, too. But yeah. I just, you know, just laughed it off, smiled, and it was normal. Sorry, maybe I'm brushing over too much. But no. there were technical questions asked, asked. And I just, you know, just slam dunk, just batted it away. It's fine. Yeah. So, uh one of the reasons I really wanted to, you know, talk to you today and bring you in and obviously appreciate you taking the time is you just got back from a conference. Uh, what was it? A few months ago? Yeah. So it was about yeah. four months ago now. GraphQL yeah. Summit 2018. How was that? It was my first conference ever. And I really, really enjoyed it just because I set myself for, for all these ex expectations and, mm -hmm. I, and I lived it. I met all the conference speakers I wanted to talk to and I walked next to my favorite de developers that I follow online no right? way yeah i said hi and shook hands and i was like <laughs> thank you so much i really appreciate what you do out there yeah and that's just it so so you're telling me that as a you know junior developer we'll say well not you know really junior i guess you, you know well, early early on in your career yeah and you're going to this conference um you know global i'm assuming mm -hmm. you know people from around the world for graphql and you're walking right up to the people who are the top of the game when yeah. it comes to working within JavaScript, GraphQL, whatever language it is. Yeah. And how, why, why did you feel so comfortable doing that? Just because I know that in this environment, people are open to, first one, don't be weird, right? There's like this whole meta of communication skills that you have developed, and mm -hmm. I'm okay with that. And knowing when to speak and when to, when someone's inviting and someone's just there standing and smiling and talking, that's when you can come in and say hi. 
And you know, of course, at lunchtime, everyone everyone says go meet people. Mm-hmm. And at lunchtime, I see someone walking by that I recognize, and I go up and say, "Hi, I'm Dennis. I would like to meet you." And it's as simple as that. You just say hello. Are you free to talk? And if they say no, then you you walk away. Yeah. If they say yes, and most of the time they say yes. Yeah. It's, that's it. Yeah. It's amazing how easy it is. It's so easy. Yeah. And that's it's, it's another thing you know with networking events, conferences. Most of the people there are there to talk to other people anyways. Yeah, you know, yeah. you make that eye contact, and it's like, oh, we're talking now. Yeah. I see you. You see me. Here yeah. comes my handshake. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I, I, I was recently at a conference, too, uh, a Startup Grind Global Conference, and it was um, a little bit more of a, you know, kind of the, the networking event um, community uh, focus. So it wasn't as specific mm-hmm. as GraphQL, if you will. Um, but... Uh, something that I, you know, looking back, wish I had done a little bit more was prep. I didn't realize how much prep needed to be put in. And, I, oh. and you know, we talk to students all the time about how important prep is for networking events because, you know, a lot of people go to networking events and think to themselves, oh, my gosh, you know, I don't know who to talk to. I don't, you know, I, I, I'm so out of my element. Well, you know, you go in, you look at the RSVP list, you can tell, oh, wow, this person might be somebody I really should reach out to. Mm-hmm. Conferences are a little bit tougher. You know, you've got probably tenfold uh, number of people, maybe a yeah. hundredfold. And um, on top of that, everybody's moving around between stages, between these different talks. Um, so what did you do leading up to the conference, uh, you know, that one, that helped you, mm-hmm. and then two, that maybe you wish you had done a little bit differently? Mm-hmm. Funny you mentioned that. I did light prep work just thinking that I may have – to need to mm-hmm. and so i looked up the number of speakers i looked up who i really want to talk to and just the um you don't know what companies are coming but i made sure if i were to talk to someone i just have a couple questions and i made sure i was in the right mindset to say hi and introduce because at the conference you want to make your time worth it right um west boss had a wonderful podcast or west boss and scott stolinski had a wonderful podcast mm-hmm. on just meeting people at conferences and just how to to talk you, you um, so I prep myself with that, right? I when I say hi to one, uh, someone, I start a conversation. You continue, but you also have to leave room for them to exit when they want to. Yeah, and that's so important. You don't be the weirdo that keeps <laughs> talking to you. Yeah. So that was what I did prep. But it, if I had to do something better, it was. Um, there are sometimes there are some people I was afraid of talking to, um, and I realized that. But I shouldn't have that fear. I if I had just let go of that, I would have even better time. Mm. Yeah. Not to say that I didn't have a great yeah. time there. But so, so, you know, kind of prepping and practicing some of the questions that you were going to ask, you made it a little easier to walk up to people. Right. Um, you had seen a little bit of who, who the speaker list was, uh, who you were, you're like, that would be super cool to meet yeah, him. Yeah. Um, what didn't you do that you'd wish you, what, what are you going to do? Not, not, what are you going to do next year? When you head back to GraphQL again, what are you going to do? I will ask to connect people I talked to on LinkedIn right there and there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just connect. Were really you using quick. the little QR scanner? I didn't. Oh. Yeah, LinkedIn's got a new, new little – ready for this? Two networking go- pieces of gold. Mm-hmm. Uh, LinkedIn now has a little QR scanner, so you can just obviously pop up LinkedIn. It's like you're at Whole Foods, you know, put it through your Amazon Prime thing. Boom, scan that. You're connected immediately. Oh. And you can also turn on Bluetooth settings to share uh, your LinkedIn account and connection with people around you. So Whoa. say, for example, you're at a conference, you're in a room at a networking event, and you hop onto LinkedIn and look at um, – you you click on the little top search button um, and look at who's around you. You can just mm-hmm. one-click connect with all of them. Whoa. It's, I know. It changes the game. Yeah. It makes it a little it, – it, you know, of course, you want to you be – you know, cognizant of other people and their, you know, their, their personal space and stuff like that. But hey, man, if you're talking to somebody sitting right next to you and you can just boom, one click connect, mm-hmm. makes it a lot easier, a little easier to yeah. you know, follow up and stuff. I mean, I, I think next time what I would do differently heading to, you know, Startup Grand Global. And, and luckily, actually, I had a um, great conversation with a gentleman who reached out to me, shot me a message before the conference mm-hmm. asking if I wanted to grab coffee. You know, he saw what we're doing here at Learning Fuse. He's also building um, an online training platform and, 
you know, wanted to talk about ed tech and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And so uh, I was like, yes, this is amazing. And so that's something I think I'm going to do next time is look and actually reach out to people beforehand. Oh, yes. Oh, then you can great. set up coffees, lunches. You know, y- you get that dedicated one-on-one time instead of having to, like you said, you go to these, some of these conversations. You want to leave people in a room for exit. But you have so many questions. You probably want to learn so much from Definitely. them. Um, so that, like I said, that's something that I'll be, uh, I'll probably be doing next time I, uh, I head up there because you know, I, it's, it sounds like you had a blast. I had an amazing time, you know, at the conference. I feel like you come back with such different energy. Yeah, you're reinvigorated. Yeah. You yeah. love tech again. Yeah. Well, do you guys use much GraphQL? At, we started uh, doing Blue yes. You yes. did. We're are wrapping. You, are you, uh, you uh, converting people? <laughs> yes, we we're all on the the bandwagon now. So we wrap our APIs with GraphQL. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Um. Well, I, I I feel like you know we can kind of kind of wrap up here you know um, as we're kind of you know getting near the end, but what would you say a uh, piece of advice for you know anybody looking to get into coding, anybody mm-hmm. maybe in a boot camp, or maybe they're going through their job search, mm-hmm. and you know because once again this is the career services corner. We want to help people find jobs, get past that you know, black hole of submitting resumes yeah. online. So what would you say, you know, that maybe helped you the most? And should I be as particular as possible? As whatever you want to say, man. We'll just delete it if it, we don't like it. Yes. <laughs> maybe let's go from top down really quick. Um, my general motto, I was I was in survival mode. I, I needed to do what I needed to do to get my job, to get myself a job. Mm. But what I really is, make sure you're well-rounded, soft and hard, sco- hard skills, um, going the extra mile will always show. Your hard work will always show, whether that's prepping for an interview a little bit more or that extra five, ten minutes. Mm. It always pays off in dividends. Um, never discount for your – did I say that right? Never discredit yourself for, for not doing okay. so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> your hard work will show is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Cut the rest out. <laughs> right. So in being particular, my advice is um, – if you're applying for a job, you're looking at a job description. Mm. I'm sure you guys will talk like this later on, but you don't have to satisfy every single one of them. You're only maybe satisfying maybe 50 or even 33 percent. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. It's actually crazy because you know at the end of the day it's just programming language, and you learn everything else on the go. Um, so if anyone is feeling uneasy about applying for something, I would say make sure you know those few things well, right? The company, the job market right now is going towards specialization versus generalists. Mm. Of course, startups could look for generalists, but um, to get yourself somewhere, make sure you know something well, and you could talk through that. And then, uh, I guess you know, kind of thinking about your last job search with with Kelly Blue Book, how did did you? Was that like an online application process? Was it something that you had met somebody before? You know, at a networking event, did you? I mean, did you go through the traditional channels, or was that you know, were you able to kind of work your way out of the you know the, the submitting the resume until needed? Mine was a little bit out of the way because I'm mean, non traditional because the manager and I had already formed connections prior, nice. and so it was a simple sending a nice long email of detailing what I've done since I first applied. So this is my second time applying. Okay. Oh, yeah. so you followed back up with them. I followed back up yeah. seven months later. I was like, hey, I've done this and this and this. Um, please consider, do you have any positions open? And I saw I saw that you do have one open on your site. And I sent it to um, the manager, Marv. Mm-hmm. And he, sent, he said he didn't have any, but he sent it to the other two managers. And it was done from there on. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So, so, so you reached out. Not even a hundred percent sure if you know there was something you, you had an idea that yeah. the team had an opening. Yeah. You know, directly reached out to the manager, and he actually passed you along to his yeah. colleagues. Uh, oh my gosh! You know, it's just, it's this crazy thing where people are looking to you know most of the time help other people, especially That's ones what that they is. have a connection with. Yeah. You had built that rapport, that trust, that right. you know where he he was excited you know to share your resume mm-hmm. and. Who knows? Maybe he didn't even know if you know the other people had an opening or a need, but you know was willing to pass your resume along. Right. Stuff. So, um, but man, Dennis, it's been awesome chatting with you. Thank you so much. DJ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't. Do you have any other conferences that are on the horizon? Anything you're keeping an eye out for? You're gonna uh, be at AWS Summit. I will be. It's free, guys. Just register, go. They allow. They give a lot of free swag. I got like a um. What is that? I, I picked up a free camera one time. A free camera. Yeah, free. You know, deep lens camera. You know yeah. how I got that? Quick tip, guys. Um. 
they had a they had only a specific number of openings, right? But I came maybe halfway, and I said, "Hey, I came from a restroom," and they let me in. And at the end of the, the the class, they gave me a free camera as well, as if I was part of the class. What? Guys, don't cheat like I did, but... Oh, so this was in one of the AWS... Uh, workshops. Workshops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Oops. Oh, man. Coming from the bathroom. Um, cool. Well, when, what date's AWS? April um, 4th? I don't it? remember. I, yes. Okay. Yeah, I'm not 100% sure either. We can get that added yeah. to uh, to the info at the bottom of the, uh, the video. So... Um, once again, thanks for coming in. Thank you, I appreciate it. First one, for, woo! Yeah, battling battling the rain out there, yeah. wrapping up the career services corner here, and uh, hopefully we'll uh, we'll follow along. How can people? Are you are you on Twitter? I'm on are Twitter. You, yeah, yeah you can follow do you me. blog at all either? I started blogging. You started blogging? Yes. Nice. Okay, where can people find you? You can find me at Dang It Dennis. Dang It Dennis. So it's D A N G I T D E N N I S. Okay, that yeah. yeah. Dang it, Dennis. Feel free to reach out to anyone. Yeah, yeah, because guess what? Because, you know, that's what you did. That's what got some of the conversations going. That's what landed you, you mm-hmm. know, this second job and this awesome opportunity. Kelly yeah, I just want to share and help so. out anyone else that's coming into this. Yeah. yeah, it's amazing. The IT community is so supportive of each other. People yeah. just need to reach out and ask. That's, they just have to ask. That's, yeah. what, that's You're right. You just have to ask first. Yeah. All right, man. Thanks again for coming in. Thank have you.